Hello there and welcome to this IELTS academic writing preparation video. Today we are going to go through a lesson regarding task one, specifically looking at line graphs. So I'm going to show you a guide and a strategy that you can use when it comes to answering questions about line graphs. And we'll go through two step-by-step -step examples of different types of line graphs that you will most likely see on the exam. So let's get started. First, I just want to go over some information, basic information that come into play when you have line graph questions. So usually you can expect to see multiple lines and these lines show changes over time. So you'll most likely see dates here and in your writing, you'll need to look at similar trends and values that you'll need to group together in order to write your essay. Now with multiple lines, you could see on a simple level, just about two to three lines, or you could see groupings of lines. And our two examples today will show those two different scenarios. So here is a general guide that you should be using when answering this line graph question and writing your essay. Now it has two steps, but we'll go into detail on how to expand these steps. But on a basic level, be prepared for step one, which is analyze the graph and plan how to group the information. So what we just talked about on the previous slide in terms of trends and values, you want to group the information. And then in your second main step, you're going to write an essay using a recommended essay structure that I'll show you in just a bit. So with these two steps, this is basically what you should be prepared to do. But step one has a guide that is a little bit more in depth. So if we're looking at step one, you have sections A and B. So when you're analyzing the graph and planning how to group that information, you should also be thinking about organizing the information into two categories. It's usually going to be two categories, and these coincide with the two paragraphs that we'll have in our outline and in our essay, which we'll look at a little bit later but you want to organize the information into very distinct categories. This is really important and something that comes with analyzing the graph. Then once you've done that, you want to describe key information from each category. So you don't want to describe everything, that will definitely lose points in your essay. You want to look at the main information, key details, and we will show you how to do that today. Now, in order to describe them, it is helpful if you make sort of an outline before actually writing your essay, and I'll show you how I do that very briefly. With time and practice, it'll just be second nature, and it actually won't take you that long to write your outline before writing your essay, so I would definitely recommend that. So, with this being said, let's go ahead and look at our first example prompt today, and we're going to keep this step and this information in mind. All right, so we have our first example, and let's take a look at the prompt first. I'm going to read it and underline some interesting or key words. So it says, the graph below gives information from a 2008 report about consumption of energy in the USA since 1980 with projections until 2030. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words, because as we know, 150 words is going to be our minimum. We'll want to stay around there, definitely meeting that requirement and not going too far over 200. Because remember, we have 20 minutes to outline this and also write our essay. So we don't want to take too long by writing more than necessary. So let's strive for between 150 and 200 today. Now, it's extremely important to pay attention to the time. So like I said earlier, you're most likely going to see dates here, and it's very important to pay attention to time. So there could be a date range from the past with predictions for the future, which is exactly what we see here today. This is actually quite common. So you're looking at the past and the future. So in that case, it's really important to use past tense, but also future tense where necessary. The grammar for this specific essay will be very important. We'll talk about the scoring in just a little bit, but 
these types of prompts will really allow you to showcase your knowledge of using the past and the future tense. Okay, so now we are looking at step one, which is going to be analyzing the graph and planning how to group the information. And you'll notice that I have a first grouping and a second grouping here. This is my outline basically. And I'm going to designate a first grouping to the body paragraph one and the second grouping to body paragraph two. For now, just pay attention to how we're gonna group the information. I'll show you how to look at the outline in just a bit. So first off, just looking at this graph, we see that coal, gas, and oil, or you can think of these as fossil fuels, show the highest consumption of units with predicted increases. Okay, so you see that these are way here at the top. We've got our time on the x-axis and the quadrillion units on the y-axis. These three show the highest consumption of units as time goes on. So it just makes sense to make this whole section here, so fossil fuels, oil, coal, and gas, as one grouping. And then we have here the cleaner energy. So wind, hydro, solar, and nuclear, these here have the lowest consumption of units and will most likely remain relatively low. So the best way to group this is in one category as well. So I'm going to group these here and basically consider this as your first grouping and the cleaner energy, your second grouping. So you might be wondering how we arrived at this. And basically you just wanna look visually, you want to analyze your graph and see what they have in common. There is really no other way to do this. It wouldn't make sense to group nuclear and coal and oil and hydropower, for example. You wanna make it easier on yourself, but you also want to make sure you're analyzing the graph. So just take a, a minute and look at this, really try to analyze it. And with the more you do and the more time you devote to your analyzing of graphs, the easier it will become. And so I am going to give myself some hints. I'm going to make sure I'm prepared for my essay and I'm just going to write my groupings. So I'll say here oil, coal, and gas. And these are known as fossil fuels. So if you've studied up on your vocabulary, and especially for things that you want to brush up on for the academic version of the exam, you should know that these are called fossil fuels. If not, that's fine. This will just really help your vocabulary score and your lexical resource. So my second group then is going to be something like cleaner energy sources, which again, we know are nuclear, solar, and I'll put wind here and then hydro. Notice how my outline is not perfect when it comes to spelling or grammar, and that's fine because you want to do this quickly. So as long as you can make sense of it, don't worry because your examiner is not going to use this information. And now I'm just going to make some notes so that I am prepared for my essay. And I want to know what I'm going to write because I have to report on the main features and make relevant comparisons. So looking at petrol, oil, coal, and natural gas first, I want to look at what has been going on since 1980. And in general, for all of them, it looks like they have seen steady increases in energy consumption. There are a couple of dips right off the bat, but you see for the most part that they have generally been increasing. So I am going to talk about how they've increased, but also how things have fluctuated up until 2000. Because if you see here, we've got some dips, like I mentioned. So I do want to call attention to that. So basically here, I'm going to say steady increase, and I will say fluctuation until 2000, the year 2000. Now I'm looking specifically at petrol and oil when I talk about the fluctuation since 2000, because that looks to be the year where you can really see that it just continued to increase. The last dip happened around 1995. So I'm going to say from 2000 onward, it has been steadily increasing. There aren't any significant dips like we see here in 1995 and in 1985. Coal has also had a similar trend. Its lowest point looks to be around 1990, and then it has continued onward but I'm also going to say that coal is similar, and I'll just make a, an arrow here. So I'll say coal is similar, and then when it comes to natural gas usage, 
I also see that there were fluctuations here as well. So I'm going to say gas has also had fluctuations. But if you look here right at the end of our graph, so from 2015 almost until 2030, it really looks like it's going to level off. So you see how it is at a same level. And I'm going to make note of that because this is quite specific. You see that the other petrol and oil and coal do not have this leveling off. So I'm going to say here that gas is also expected to level off. And we'll talk about the specific units, looks to be about 24 units towards the end of 2030. So we'll talk about these details in the essay. For now, this is just my outline, so I know what I'm going to write. Now, when it comes to my second grouping, I'm going to talk about how they began the period at, it looks just to be under five quadrillion units. So I'm going to talk about how there have been some declines, except for nuclear, which seems to be pretty standard and pretty neutral. So with that in mind, I'm going to say, we'll, we'll start at five units, five quadrillion units, and I'm going to see declines in use. And I will talk about exceptions. So I'll put an exception as nuclear power. And it looks like nuclear is going to continue increasing slightly. So I'll put slight increase. And then hydropower is quite interesting because it looks to be unchanged. So it's just going to remain as it is. It's also another example of leveling off, but I'm not going to use that again because I don't want to use the same phrase too much. So I'm just going to say hydropower will remain unchanged. And then I'm also going to pay a little bit of attention to solar and wind. That is quite similar to nuclear in that they're going to increase slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and stick solar and wind into my example with nuclear power. All right, so I've cleared my screen just to give us a better example here just to give us a better idea of what I've written. And again, I'm going to write the details when I am writing my essay. These are just examples of how I'm going to group the information and how I've been able to separate, make relevant notes, and compare and contrast. Note that I'm not really going to talk about these very slight decreases in terms of numbers. I'm not going to go into every minute detail because we have 150 words as a minimum it really isn't that much. So I'm going to use it in my essay just to call attention to these main features and comparisons. So this is our first step. Now I want to take you back to step two, which is going to involve writing our essay, but we need to make sure we're familiar with the correct format. And there's one more thing we're going to do before we actually put pen to paper, and that is looking at the general overview of all of our trends here. So first let's take a look at our format and then we'll start writing. All right, so going back to our guide, again, I'm sure you remember step two is about writing an essay using the recommended essay structure. And this structure is very important. I'll show you in just a bit when it comes to scoring, but you really want to organize your paragraphs well because it will help you not only write, but it'll also help you get a higher score for your coherence and cohesion. So what your essay should look like is obviously it should start with an introduction, then it will have a paragraph dedicated to the overview, which we'll look at in just a bit as well. The third part is body paragraph one, and then you want to end with body paragraph two. So this looks like four distinct sections. And of course, for the introduction, you wanna keep it simple. You should be paraphrasing your task question. So what does it mean to paraphrase? Basically, you're going to restate the task question in a different way using your own words. And then your second section will be the overview. This is going to describe the overall trend, or you're going to write a general overview of the main groupings. So you have an option here. The important part is that you are understanding the overall trends and not looking at your specific groupings, which we've done in step one. So we're going to do this when we go back to our essay. And then three and four should be pretty self-explanatory after having done step one and outlining everything. The third step is going to be 
describing the first grouping of lines with similar trends or values. In our case, this is going to be describing the fossil fuel group, and that was our first group. And then the second body paragraph is going to describe the second grouping of lines with similar trends or values. And in our case today, that is going to be the cleaner sources of energy, so nuclear and wind and solar. And there you have it. That is a simple essay structure that you can use, starting with the introduction and ending with your body paragraph. This has it all because it introduces using the task question, it talks about an overall trend, and then it goes into detail in steps three and four. Now, before we actually start writing, I just want to review the scoring with you so that it's fresh in your mind. For writing task one, you're going to be judged on these four areas. The first thing is task achievement. So basically, this looks at whether or not you were able to answer the question and follow your directions. And in this case, it's going to be writing a minimum of 150 words and analyzing the graph and writing about it correctly. So this is where those phrases like summarize the information or select and report the main features really come into play. So make sure you're paying attention to your directions. They're pretty standard. And if you follow this step-by-step -step guide, you will include what is necessary for this task achievement. Second is your coherence and cohesion. So basically, does your essay flow? Does it make sense? Is it logical? Is it placed in a logical manner? So starting with your introduction and then going into your overall trend and then going into detail is a great way to get your points here. And the last two sections we'll talk about as we are writing our essay and after, we're going to look at the lexical resource and the grammatical range and accuracy. So this is basically looking at your language. Are you able to use a variety of vocabulary words, phrases that adhere to the subject, phrasal verbs, and are you able to use your grammatical range accurately and flexibly? So for example, today we're looking at the past and we're looking at the future. And I'll show you some examples specifically looking at how we can do this and how we can really get a lot of points in this area. So keep this in mind as we're writing today. Let's go back to our writing and look at the overall trend. Okay, and here we are back with our example on the left-hand side. You'll see on the right-hand side, I've added just some notes about the overview. Now, you could do this directly after step one. You could do it as part of step one as well. It's just important that you do it. And I wanted to show you the outline before actually delving into the overview. So remember, we have to look at the overall trend or the general overview of groupings. And if we look here at our example, you see that all of the options here have expectations for growth, and you see predictions for similar trends, pretty much. If we look at our first group, again, remember that's petrol and oil, coal and natural gas, they have all shown general increases since the start of the period, because you see they started here at either right about 15, 20, or 35, and they have continued to grow. So I'm going to say here for fossil fuels, FF, again, remember, use your abbreviations if you can to save time. I'll say increases and expectations for growth and also more reliance. Because if you look at all of our groups here and all of our options, the fossil fuels are higher. They are the highest three. So you can expect that people will rely on these more than the cleaner sources. And so this is my overall trend for fossil fuels. If we want to also look at an overall trend for our cleaner sources of energy, so I'll put CE just so that that is clear. Cleaner sources of energy, they do have less consumption, but they do have predictions for a similar trend to what we see here with fossil fuels. So they do have similar trends, but you see the only difference really is that they account for less consumption. All right, so in this case, we're going to use the overall trend. When it comes to our general overview of groupings, you see how they are similar. So we can just get rid of this because I've basically talked about the general overview of groupings here in our overall trend. 
because they are the same even though they're on two different levels. So one is higher with more consumption and one has less consumption. So this is really just a couple of seconds of work. If you were able to analyze the first and second groupings well like we did, this little portion should not take any time at all. It's just important that you do it because our second part of this essay will involve the overview. So let's get started with actually writing our essay. Again, remember, I'm going to take this slower with you just so that we can explain everything and I'm going to write along with you, but you should be allotting about 20 minutes for this entire process. It might seem like not that much, but with practice and with time, you will get the hang of it and it'll just become second nature. So I'm going to start with our introduction. And remember, you do not want to write this heading on the actual exam. I just wanna do it so that things are clear for us. And remember, we're just going to paraphrase this prompt. We're going to paraphrase the question task. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So it says here, the graph below gives information from a 2008 report. So I'm going to say the given line graph illustrates data from a report in 2008. Okay, so you see how instead of saying the graph below, I've said the given line graph. Instead of saying gives information, I've said illustrates data. And from a 2008 report, I've said a report in 2008, let's continue, about consumption of energy in the USA since 1980 with projections until 2030. I am going to say here, a report in 2008 regarding energy consumption in the USA since 1980 with predictions until 2030, okay? And if we look at the last half of the sentence, I have regarding energy consumption instead of saying about consumption of energy. I've kept in the USA, obviously, since 1980 is fine. But instead of saying with projections until 2030, I've said with predictions until 2030. So really, this comes with practice and knowing your synonyms. So you don't want to say the same thing. In fact, you want to use synonyms like data instead of information or predictions instead of projections, because this will show the examiner that you have a great base of vocabulary and you're able to call upon these synonyms. So study up on this so that you are able to use these at a moment's notice. And really that is all you need for the introduction. You really don't want to write too much in your introduction. You want to save that space for everything else you need to write, all right? So we've done that. Now it's time for our lovely overview paragraph. And remember, this is going to call upon general trends, what we have written here in our notes. We should not really be using any numbers or any details because we should leave that all for our first and second body paragraphs. So I'm going to say, overall, the fossil fuels have shown increases in consumption since the start of the period with expectations for even more reliance on these fuel sources. And remember, this is where I talked about fossil fuels increasing and the expectation that there would be more reliance and more growth as we see here in our graph. That's my first sentence. I'm going to go directly into our cleaner sources of energy. So I'm going to say cleaner energy sources have accounted for considerably less consumption with predictions for a similar trend. And as we saw, again, it is considerably less. This is a great phrase to use. And it does have less consumption based on our graph. However, the predictions are similar for its growth trend. You see how they are still looking to increase just as our fossil fuels. Don't worry also, I'm going to talk about all of these great phrases like considerably less and overall at the end of this when we're going to analyze our finished product. All right, and that is enough. That is enough for the overview. We have talked about the general trend. Now it is time for our body paragraph 
one. And remember, we've got our notes on the left-hand side. So I have all of this here that I'm going to use. And I'm going to start off by saying, regarding fossil fuels, such as coal, natural gas, petrol, and oil, they have seen steady increases in energy consumption since 1980. And that is true because remember we saw here they had a steady increase it started in 1980 that's great let's continue i'm going to focus on now petrol and oil so it says petrol and oil started at 35 quadrillion units in 1980 which is what we see right here on our graph i'm using specific numbers and areas and then i'm going to say then fluctuated until 2000, like we talked about in our notes. And then going from 2000, I'm going to say at which point they rose steadily with a prediction of over 45 quadrillion units by 2030. And that is exactly what we see in our graph. So now I'm going to talk about coal. So I'll say additionally, Coal followed a similar rising trend, which is what we have here in our notes. And then about that rising trend, I'll talk about the prediction, and I'll say it is predicted that it will have surpassed 30 quadrillion units by 2030. Now, this is a really important sentence, which we will talk about at the end when I go over the language used. But you see that we're talking about the future and something that will have happened by that date. So I have to use the future perfect. As you see here, our projections start from 2015 to 2030. So you want to base this off of what your chart says. I'm sure that IELTS will publish new material when it comes time for 2030, when 2030 is in our present. But for now, it's in our future. So we have to use the future perfect here. Again, I'll go over this later. Our last sentence, we'll talk about gas, natural gas. So I'm going to say natural gas usage demonstrated fluctuations, and it is set to level off at around, it says 24 quadrillion units from 2020 onwards. And that is exactly what we saw when we looked at natural gas. Okay, so that is our first body paragraph. And you see it is quite long. We have included a lot of information, but we're going to go into body paragraph two now to top it off and finish off with our cleaner sources of energy. So since I am contrasting, because it is quite different, I'm going to start by saying, in contrast, cleaner energy fuel sources all began the period at under five quadrillion units. If we see here, it starts right after five. I'm not quite sure how much, but that is a good way to say just under five or below five. And I'll say, and showed declines in their use with the exception of nuclear, which climbed slightly to six quadrillion units in 2005 and i am being specific here because i want to add detail we see that nuclear rose above five it looks like it's six so i've used the specific information here now i'm going to talk about solar and wind power so let's say solar wind power followed a similar trend and are predicted to continue steadily which we see here follows this trend, it continues steadily. Remember, solar and wind, we have two separated by a slash, so I'm doing it exactly as I see in the graph, but I am making sure to use the plural form of the verb to be. So I'm talking about how they've continued steadily after showing slight increases after the lowest point in 1995, which we see here is its dip. Now I'll talk about hydropower, and that's really all we have left to do. So I'll say hydropower has remained the lowest of the three and is projected to remain relatively unchanged until 2030. And that is exactly what we see here. It was unchanged, 
and we have until 2030 in our graph, and it is the lowest of the three. So that is all we really need for body paragraph two. Now, this is our essay as it is. I'm going to show you now a cleaner version. I'll get rid of these headings, and I'm also going to color code the important language that we'll talk about now. Okay, and here we are with the final product. So I have color-coded words, red, blue, and green, based on this area below. So we have synonyms and topic vocabulary in blue, useful vocabulary and phrases in green, this also includes some grammar, and red is important functional words. And you'll note that our word count is 228 words. That is about as high as you want to go. Now, I have really embellished here and included a lot of great language, so that is why it's a bit longer than 200. We're about 20 words over what I said earlier with 200, but that is fine, as long as you are not completely exaggerating. We haven't written anything unnecessary. This is all necessary, and keep in mind that these titles here, the headings of our energy, also contribute to the word count. So we had things like petrol and oil, cleaner energy fuel sources, and cleaner energy sources, which took up some word count as well. So whenever you have long titles, keep that in mind. Now look at our important functional words first. This is in red. So we have things like overall for the overview, regarding, which is a great word to look at specific examples and specific groupings. In contrast is great to contrast information and is projected to, this could also be green, but I've put it in red just because it serves a purpose to show the function of hydropower here and the function of the trend. So these are great words that just keep your essay moving smoothly and organizing everything clearly. Our synonyms and topic vocabulary in blue are anything that really pertain to the topic at hand. So we have fossil fuels, which we knew from outside knowledge, outside research, and preparation for any sort of scientific topics for the exam, cleaner energy sources, that's the same thing here. We just knew that these were cleaner based on our knowledge for this specific academic subject. And that can really help you with your lexical resource as well. Now I wanna spend some time with the useful vocabulary and phrases. These have all played an important part in our grammar and also in our essay. So shown increases. This is the present perfect because we are not talking about anything specific, like a specific date. So your overview paragraph will most likely have the present perfect because you're not being specific. So it says have shown increases, have accounted for, make sure you know that in, for example, comes after increases or for comes after accounted. And then here we're looking at fossil fuels. Again, we see steady increases. This is a great way to say that it hasn't really shot up or hasn't been a, a spike in data. Steady is great. We use it here for rows as well, rising trends, fluctuations, and again, demonstrated fluctuations and leveling off like we used in our notes. In this paragraph, I just want to call your attention to this important sentence using the future perfect. Remember, whenever you see something like projections or predictions in your graph, Keep in mind that you're most likely going to have to use future perfect and it will really help you in your grammar score. So brush up on this. It is predicted that it will have surpassed. So you have will have plus the past participle surpassed and by a certain date. So make sure you're practicing on your future perfect. Now the last paragraph here, we have declines. Climbed slightly to is a great way to say rose steadily without having to repeat the same phrase. Continue steadily is also great, just switching it up instead of saying rising and increasing. And slight increases after the lowest point. This is nice, very scientific, and really using your data to your advantage. So with all of this being said, this would all uh, count towards the task achievement because we have done everything. We have summarized information, we've reported the main features, we've made comparisons where relevant, and our vocabulary is really advanced, as well as our grammar. So make sure you are trying to get as many points as possible when it comes to your 
lexical resource and your grammar. And of course, it goes without saying that this is very cohesive and succinct. Okay, so I have taken the time here to really show you everything. In our second example, we're going to go a bit quicker and it's going to be a bit different. So let's go ahead and look at that now. All right, here is our second example for today. It's a bit different in terms of the outlook and also the topic. So let's get started with our writing prompt. It says, the chart illustrates the consumption of three kinds of fast food by teenagers in Mauritius from 1985 to 2015. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Of course, we'll have to write at least 150 words. Now you see here, we do not have any sort of projection. We just have the number of times eaten per year on the y-axis and the years here on the x-axis. And we have three lines. So blue is hamburger, red is pizza, and green is fried chicken. So we're looking at the consumption of fast food by Mauritian teenagers from 1985 to 2015. In this case, we don't have really two different groupings. We have three lines. So some students consider this to be a bit easier. Perhaps the topic is also a bit easier to understand as well. So by looking at step one, we see analyze the graph and plan how to group the information. I have grouped already hamburgers and fried chicken and pizza in the second group. That's because hamburgers and fried chicken increase. So you see that they increased from 1985 to 2015, their consumption increased. And pizza is the lone wolf, we can say, because it's the only one that decreased with time. So this is a very clear grouping. A lot of times students would say, it's difficult to put three lines into two groupings, but I can assure you that if you are able to find the differences in the trends, it will be much easier to do so. So this is quite straightforward. It doesn't look like there are any dips or any strange things going on. But I do want to note in my notes here, when it comes to hamburgers and fried chicken, they have an upward trajectory. Okay, this is another great way to say increasing. And I do want to talk about a dramatic rise and then a plateau when it comes to fried chicken, because this right here, this line is very interesting, and I think it is a very relevant and main feature. So I'm going to note that. Then pizza, again, it's very straightforward. It's very self-explanatory that it decreases. And this is actually probably going to be a little bit difficult to say this in enough words, because you don't just want to say pizza consumption decreased. You want to really use your language to the best of your ability. So I'm going to talk about how it fell continuously and I'm going to add in dates and this should help me reach my 150 word minimum. Now again, before we get into writing, I just want you to look at this overview. Is there an overall trend or what are your general overviews of groupings? And there is not an overall trend here. Now in our last example, things were steadily increasing. That was a general trend. In this case, there is not one specific general trend that all three follow. So it's best to focus on number two, looking at a general overview of your groupings. Hamburgers and chicken were the most popular and pizza declined from 1985 to 2015. Again, it's very straightforward here where this is your overview. Okay, so we've done the prep work quite quickly. I do want to take this a bit quickly so that you can see what this would be like actually on the exam. And here I'm going to place our essay. And here we are. So let's look at this together. Again, I've got the same color coding system here. Let's read our introductory paragraph and then take it from there. So it says, the line graph depicts the consumption of three types of fast food, hamburgers, pizza, and fried chicken over a 30 year period by Mauritian teenagers. Units are given as the number of times each kind was eaten per year. And again, if we look at how we were able to paraphrase this, our writing prompt says the chart illustrates. We've said the line graph depicts. Again, same idea, it's just using different words. And here we see three kinds of fast food 
And here we have three types of fast food in Mauritius. In our question statement, it says in Mauritius from 1985 to 2015. Here we say over a 30 year period, which is still correct by Mauritian teenagers. So this is saying the same thing, just in different words. It's also nice to include information about the units, especially in this case where it will not be as long as our previous example. So it will be helpful to include this information. Now, when we look at our overview paragraph here, again, we start with overall. Hamburgers and fried chicken had become the most popular foods by 2015 with the biggest increase in numbers eaten, while pizza, which was most widely eaten at the start, declined precipitously in popularity. So again, we are starting with our overview, so overall is a great word to use here. Widely eaten is a great topic vocabulary here. So it is not included, but we see that it was the highest, most eaten type of food, so widely eaten, is a great adjective here. And then declined precipitously is an excellent way to say sharply, steeply in popularity, which is how it declined. It was quite drastic. Now our body paragraph one is all about hamburgers and fried chicken. And it says, with regard to hamburgers, consumption showed a steady upward trajectory from 10 times eaten per year to over 70 times. And again, if we look at Hamburgers, our blue line, it is exactly that. So it started at 10 and it went right above 70. Likewise, now this is a great way to say that it is similar. Teenagers in Mauritius ate fried chicken only five times per year in 1985 before rising dramatically to a plateau right here that we see in 2005. Then this increased slightly at the end of the period to finish as the second most popular food. So you see how it increased just a bit, and of course it is the second most popular. Now again, if you look at these green phrases, they're great ways to talk about decreases, increases. A plateau is very similar to leveling off, which we used in our previous example. And again, just knowing these terms before you take your exam will definitely help you. Now, our last body paragraph right here, of course, it is a contrasting idea. So for my functional word, I've used on the contrary. Although pizza was the most popular food with Mauritian adolescence in 1985, its consumption continuously dropped until 2015, which is exactly what we see here. While it started out at being consumed 60 times a year in 1985, pizza consumption continued to decrease and ultimately arrived at its lowest point of 10 times per year in 2015. So notice how I didn't have that much to say about pizza, but I relied on my data and my information. So I added in some numbers, 60, 2015, 10, and that brought me, all of this brought me to my word count of 187 words, which fulfills my minimum requirement. I didn't write too much. All of this is definitely necessary. And if you just take a look at the color-coded words, notice how that really adds to the lexical resource and the grammar. Of course, it's cohesive, it's coherent, and we have definitely fulfilled this task. So notice how our strategy was the same, even though our graphs and our two examples for today were quite different. All right, excellent job today with our two very different examples of line graphs. Let's wrap up today with some do's and don'ts. First off, for your do's, of course you want to analyze your graph before you start writing your essay. So really take the time to outline. With time and practice, it should take you no more than a minute or two. And you'll have to plan how to describe the information to the best of your ability, pulling out your relevant facts, making comparisons where necessary, and this will make it really easy to write your essay. And also, as for your overview paragraph, you'll have to understand the overall trend or perhaps overall trends if there is more than one. This is very important for your overview. And make sure you're organizing your essay with our foolproof method of introduction, overview, body paragraph one, and body paragraph two. This is the clearest way to do it. Now for your don'ts. Do not start writing the essay immediately and planning as you write. 
This will cause confusion, some potential mistakes, and it'll actually take you more time to fix those mistakes and make sure that everything is organized. So don't do that. And also don't write the wrong amount. In our first example, we were right at the limit of where we want to be around 220 words. That's probably the highest point. And make sure you're writing at least a minimum of 150. And of course, don't get confused over different groups and different lines. This is more to do with our first example. We had about six different lines. So we had to really group them efficiently and not let that take up too much time. So always analyze your graph. And of course, I hope you continue on with your IELTS preparation. You should visit us at www.bestmytest.com slash IELTS. There we've got a lot of great videos on different writing task one examples and also all of the sections when it comes to IELTS. So be sure to check us out on there. Again, great job. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.